It's not the most accessible music, I guess. No, uh, it's not. It's but not. but the way the way I don't know. I can't even put words or put it into a sentence. But the way like your songs are are, are structured and it's like I, I don't know. Like what? How how do you guys do that? <laughs> I think there really is a structure. It's not prog, but it's not really structured in any way either. We just write songs. Whenever I need music gear, I always go to Sweetwater.com. If it's mics, headphones, or studio and recording gear, Sweetwater has you covered. Next time you need any music gear, support the podcast by using the link in the description and comment section below. Dude, you've been trying to update your Zoom for like the last six months. Dude, every time I log into Zoom, I just never use it. Every, every time I log into Zoom, it's like update your Zoom. Well, I bought that new computer, and now with like oh. the silicon chip or whatever, you like have to update your Zoom. But like, <laughs> it didn't work at all. There's so many updates on your computer, you know, just all the time, all the time, all the time. It's like, yeah. it's like what? What are you updating? Right. Uh, updating my my fucking bank info, you fucks. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we have. August Burns Red, my close friends, JB and Brent. Hello. It's, it's great. It's great to see you guys, man. Yeah. Great to see you, too. Yeah. Stoked to be here. We have uh, a little bit of history. Right. You know, and it's, it's really great to see you guys on, on the road celebrating your band being around for 20 years. I know. It rules. How do, how do your bones feel? The body? It's yeah. good? They're good now that we're yeah. a couple weeks in. Yeah. The neck's not hurting anymore. <laughs> right, you right. Know? The bangovers aren't what they were after show number one and two. My lower back was sore like the first like like three or four shows. And I'm like, oh, this is new. <laughs> I'm like, I haven't had this before. Oh, but oh, yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's, it's fine now. But yeah, you know, as you get older, you get new aches and pains. And that's just life. That's life, man. Yeah. You, get, like, you get like this little like surprise like pains and aches, right, like right. oh, that, that's a that's a new one, right? And you're like, <laughs> I, hate that. I hate that, but it's true. And you're like, and if it yeah. lasts longer than a month, I'll talk to my doctor. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, sure. Yeah, this uh, old age, but uh, I mean, Brent, you used to be. I mean, I don't want to call you out. You used to be kind of chunky. Yeah, yeah. And now it's, it's great to see you. You know, in shape. Thanks. Yeah, looking Pandem- clear and, and pandemic and, help. You know. Which I think a lot of people drank a lot more over the pandemic. I just kind of did the opposite, you know. Did I've, you? Yeah, I have two kids at home, so it's just like chill, hang out with my kids, and yeah. So, so you, you got lucky. It's amazing what you know. Skipping the two or three beers in the evening after you play will do. Oh, it will do for your health. <laughs> Who is that, dude? Right, right. What, dude? You were chunky, man. <laughs> right, you do. As a, like that's the thing. Like you know. That was probably Van Time. So we that's that's uh, like those are old. Yeah, this is like 2006. That's eat at the. I used you know. to be hot back then. Look at that. No, yeah. you are you are still a fucking handsome man, JB. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, okay. So so this picture is 2006 uh, in Corona at the Showcase Theater. Right. You guys are just ripping, dude. <laughs> you guys are ripping right there. What what what's your face doing? <laughs> Dude, these are pictures that that a buddy of ours who we hadn't seen in a few years. Yeah. He came out to see us in Raleigh, and he showed, oh, cool. he's like, "Look at these old photos I took of you guys back oh, in 2006." Sick. Yeah, and I pulled the ones where we looked the ugliest. I oh, thought, okay, it's good. And, good call. and made this post because I thought it was funny. <laughs> Dude, it, I don't even understand how you guys are that close to each other. That was a small stage at the Showcase Theater. Well, I, it is. I know that, but it literally looks like one of those pictures that you take and they like meld together <laughs> into like yeah, like a composite like, well, thing. Yeah. Well, you guys are so that, close together. Because that stage is awkward. It's like a, it's like like a corner. Right, mm-hmm. right. So you're kind of just like, and then I mean that that was my home venue. And then when you go outside the uh, state, you're like, oh shit, that was that's, that's a small ass stage. Right. So yeah, pandemic happens me. and you get shredded. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got to ride my bike more. I ride I road bike a lot. I got to do that more. And okay. like I said, you know, with the kind of beers I like, drinking like two or three a night, that's probably like 900 calories that you're just putting in. For bed, so you like the heavy yeah. stuff, like oh, the heavy yeah. beers. Yeah, I'm, I, I IPAs, mean, double, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's my shit. Well, they make you fat, so they do. If you have two, you're like, oh shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And JB drank more, right? What's that? Did you do you drink more or, or less uh, during during, during the, the pandemic? Oh, I'd say about the same. Same. Yeah. Like I didn't change. I, I ate a lot more dessert. I got really. <laughs> I, I went hard into sugar. It's a problem. I'm a sugar addict. That's like my biggest vice. I'd say. What's your choice? Pie and ice cream. Pie. And, that's a <laughs> terrible combination. No, it's delicious. It's delicious. delicious. Oh, it's it like, great, but just like for yeah. your overall healthy meat. Oh yeah. Like <laughs> there's a there's a little like 
market near where I live, then they make the best pies. And I was just like, all right, pie all the time. Yeah. Huh. During the pandemic. Um, apple pie, pumpkin pie. Yeah, apple, cherry, pumpkin. There's this pie from our area called shoe fly pie. That's like a molasses pie okay. that I love. Good. Um, it's like a Pennsylvania Dutch kind of thing. So good with ice cream. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> one, that one is good. There would be uh, nights where I'd be like, "Shit, I'm out of pie," um, <laughs> no, and, and I need I need <laughs> some sugar. And I would like I would like toast a, an Eggo waffle and put ice cream on top of it and like put syrup on it. <laughs> that like, I, like that's how grim it was at times. <laughs> Man, yeah. And you're well, and and you're, and you're still ripped. Well, I don't know if I'm ripped, but I. He's got good metabolism. Yeah, I think I have good metabolism. Uh, it's catching. It'll catch up to me though. It'll Someday. catch up. Well, it hasn't. I mean, I mean, we're we're older now. I mean, I'm 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 37. I'm 38. 38. Yeah. 38. Yep. Brent. Same. 38. Yep. Holy shit. Yeah, it's wild. Right. What? <laughs> what does? Oh, well, it doesn't it catch up with you when you're like late 20s? I don't know. I don't know. I try to exercise, dude. I try to like Same. do a little bit of exercise every day, and yeah. If I feel like I'm like starting to. Like slip a little bit. I'll I'll you know I'll curb my my dessert take in. You know I'll slow it up a little bit. <laughs> that's that's a hard thing to do. Hey Jay, type in uh, when does your metabolism slow down? At what age? Oh, uh, I think we're way past that for sure. I think you're late, right. I, I want to say late twenties. Because if it's late twenties, I mean we're dude, we're fucking ten years we're deep past that, it. dude. We're fucking deep. So oh, sure. it drops off significantly. Wait, oh, it doesn't drop off until you reach the age of 60. 60? Hell yes. I got 22 years of pie and ice cream, baby. Let's go. I'm not sure, I'm that's, how, I'm not sure that's how you're supposed to read that. Right. Ah, <laughs> it's all good, dude. It's all good. Yeah, I, I know it's a big change in late 20s. You're like, oh, if you eat, eat a fucking couple slices of pizza, and it's like, oh, that's just... I ate a piece of pizza literally as I walked into the venue this morning. We had a box of Pizza Hut pizza, <laughs> like trash garbage pizza, which I love. And... I'm like, I'm hungry, and I knew we were coming out here to do the pod, and I didn't know yeah. if I was going to have time to eat. And I'm like, just walking through the underbelly of the House of Blues yep. here in Anaheim and just chomping down a piece of cold pizza. That's how I started my day. And then I had a cookie as soon as I got into the venue. <laughs> Chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> yeah, I need to take better care of myself. It's tough, man. It's dad going life, out, right? right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess. I don't think the dad life is what's making me eat nah. shitty, though. Nah. It's what just, is it? It's, it's just... Uh, it's desire. I'd say it's desire and the desire for muscles. It's been the lack of <laughs> repercussions because I haven't really put on a lot of weight. Yeah, I, you know, I'm trying to find that, trying to find my limit. You, you've <laughs> always been in shape. Ah, yeah. I don't know. Your dad's skinny. Yeah, my oh, my, my yeah. dad's thin. Yeah, you got you got those jeans. I do have good jeans. I'm yeah. sure I'm sure I have good jeans in that regard. Your whole so family's pretty in shape. It's not it's not fair, but I'll take it. There you go. My wife's the same way. She eat whatever the heck she wants, and she doesn't gain weight. Oh my goodness! She's lucky, yeah. Doesn't that piss you off? Uh, no. It's actually great for Brent. I must, say, I must say, it's really good for me. My wife's still, you know, very attractive at the age of almost forty, so I'll take it. <laughs> it's a, it's a special thing, man. When, uh, when we're, we're, we're with our ladies and late thirties, we we uh, we're very lucky to live like the lives that that we do, and we have our. Yeah. Our ladies eating ice cream pizza and still shredded. We're like, <laughs> what a life! Right, right. What what a life! Who, who and and who really knew that after twenty years that you guys would still be around, man? That's a that's a crazy accomplishment, man. Right. Thanks. Well, same to you yeah, and right. Suicide Silence, man. You guys that's crazy. You have us by a year. Twenty one. I didn't know you guys started in two thousand two. Yeah. Yeah. You were really young when you started. I, I forgot what age. Fuck, 21 years? Well, that's 20 You're 16, years. maybe? 16. Yeah. I, w math. I was talking to Matt last night, um, and we were, like, going back. And, and I, I was 18 when the band started, and he was 17. I'm like, dang, dude, we were yeah. teenagers. That sounds crazy now. When Jordan was our bass player at the time, he was 16? Yeah. My goodness. He had been 16. And what's also crazy about about your band is that this is, this is both your first and only band. Right. Mm -hmm. Never been yeah. in anything else. Yeah. You know how crazy that is? I talked about that in a podcast the other day. They're like, you've never been in another band. I'm like, no. I'm like, I literally <laughs> learned how to play guitar when I was like 16 or 17, and then we started the band, and that was that. They're like, that is so lucky. I'm like, yeah, pretty much everything in the music industry comes down to luck. I'm like, I've there's, been like a lot. there's just like, you know, so many talented people out mm -hmm. there that are in bands and bands that are good, and they don't, 
you know, find success. It's just a lot of luck finding the right people. Yeah. You know, you got to catch you know. lightning in the bottle, man. Especially yeah. nowadays with like you scroll Instagram and you're like, never yeah, heard of that right. guy. He's way better at guitar than me. This guy's way yeah. better. This guy's <laughs> way, way better. Like everyone, <laughs> yeah. you're like, I can't play any of that. Right. Then this guy's like, that's every day, some man. kid in his bedroom playing insane shit and I'm right. like I still can't play the solo from that song that I wrote in 2009 <laughs> you know <laughs> right. but, but you guys are are fucking technical though you, I mean you, your, yeah. your riffs are like they're they're pretty yeah they're annoying dude they're, they're, they, they, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're it's funny we were learning stuff on this tour trying to play stuff from every single album and yeah. oh that, that, that's a great idea because you know we're trying to celebrate the whole the whole shebang of course but uh, so we're learning stuff off of our first record, Thrill Seeker. We're playing the first song. It's called Your Little Suburbia is in Ruins. Mm-hmm. And there's parts of that song that I just don't play well. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I still can't play this well. Right. Like, this is awkward. I don't... Uh, I probably played it better, like, honestly, 15 years ago than I do now. Like, it doesn't... It's not in my wheelhouse anymore. It's not the kind of... I, I don't write in that style anymore. Like, our styles evolve as players, I think. And mm-hmm. right. I just don't feel... I would never write that kind of thing now, and it's hard for me to to go back and and relearn it. I, I can get my I can get through it, you know, but it's yeah. not it's not as clean as it could be. Like we've done those anniversary mm-hmm. tours and trying to relearn some of this stuff, you're just like, why? It's tough. Earth. It's tough. Like there, yeah. And well, but, it's, at the time we were like, ah, yeah, this is cool. We'll never have to play that live. Don't worry about it. Right. Let's just get right. this down the studio, and then you're like, ten years uh, later. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, <laughs> shoot. No, oh wow. Right. This, right. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell the fucking future. You know, right, that. right. Well, and then like there is just such like, like with like live music, you're like, okay, I can get this. I can get this good enough for live. And you're always your, you know, your own worst critic. Of where course. like the you're, worst. you're the worst. Yeah, you're just like hearing it. Well, not you because you don't play with. The I was just gonna say, wait till your in ears, man. Yeah. It gets even worse. Oh, <laughs> you're like, put your in ears, and you're just oh. like, oh, that's not very good. But then you like watch a YouTube video of it later, and you're like, oh, that's actually all right. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> There's just a, there's, a, there's a healthy part there, like uh, that that self hatred criticism. There's right. this, it just keeps you. It pushes you. It does. Yeah. You know, it's 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 that classic. You know, blessing is a curse. It just keeps you. I, I think there's, I think if you don't have that, there's something wrong. You will right. get you'll get complacent. Right. And Complacent's then and terrible. then things. Yeah. What happens then? You'll 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 just not be very fall good. off. Yeah. I think. Totally. That's one of the biggest like like regrets we have in our career is you got you get complacent, you get comfortable, and then you gotta re, you gotta like recover. Right. right. And tough. like claw your way back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. It's quite quite you're like, oh shit. But no. after twenty years, dude, that's inevitable. There's gonna be peaks and valleys, you know? So. Up, ups and downs. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Do, do I can only imagine like the peaks and valleys that, that your band has had because it seems like I mean, so you guys start the band. Did you guys go go to high school together? Yeah, we Brett, did. Brett yeah. and I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, we were one year apart, but yeah. we were buds in school. And our drummer Matt was from the same area. Yeah. And we just he, met through mutual friends with Matt. Yeah. yeah. He was yeah. homeschooled, so he wasn't at our school. But we like ran once we started getting into like the music scene and stuff. We ran in the same like mm-hmm. s- same circle. And our original vocalist went to school. We graduated with Brent. Yeah. And our bass player was homeschooled in the same homeschool group as as Matt. As Matt. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, we all grew up in the same town, same small town when we started out. Yeah, in Lancaster. Yeah. Yeah. So is that is that like a smaller town? That's like what hour thirty outside of Philly. Yeah, about an hour and a half, and then yeah, it's actually like the city's pretty small, but the you know what would be like the metro areas. It's still like a half million people. It's got a sprawl. It's not like the you tiniest know, place. You know, a lot of suburbs around it. Yeah. Like yeah. The town that we grew up in is only five thousand people, but there's oh. like there's like. Like 20 of those towns, like, all within a couple minutes of each other. So it's, like, Interesting. tons of just small towns, small towns, small towns all the time. Like, all kind of circle around Lancaster. But, yeah. Well, I'm kind of curious how your band started because, I mean, JB, I heard that you didn't even like screaming at, at, at some point. And then now... And Brent, then, <laughs> Brent got me into yeah. screaming, dude. It was, we were doing, we were working on, like, a music, uh, not a music, a, like, AV project. Yeah. And I wanted to use this song from Poison the Well. I was in December, and he's oh just like, I hate this. And I did. Then, I hated it. Really? And then, yeah, he started the listen, and then he started listening to it. He's like, all right. You know, we all had, like, our bridge music. Like, I started listening to, like, Thursday, and that had a little bit of screaming in it, and then just mm-hmm. eventually evolved more and more. And then it really just landed on that opposite December record as, like, the record that got me into heavier music. 
but yeah, I mean that that was it. That was awesome. And then he got into it from there. Yeah, I got into uh, Tear from the Red from Poison the Well was like yeah. a pretty big album for me. And I went back and got into Opposite of December, but. Finch was my gateway band. I right. loved Finch. Oh. I was like, I was into punk. So was Brent. Like yep. we both came up in, in punk, and then I got really into Finch, and they screamed, and I loved their screaming parts. It like oh. resonated with me. And then I think From Alm to Ashes, that album Too Bad You're Beautiful was like really instrumental oh, yeah, and like yeah, yeah. breaking that broke that broke some barriers for me because that album's right. pretty abrasive. Right. Um, then Poison the Well, Evergreen Terrace, Burned Alive by Time was was one of my early big like hardcore kind of albums that mm -hmm. broke the mold. And then I, I I remember Matt was really into Between the Buried and Me and like Converge and stuff. And yeah, it, it is. so were you. And yeah. I hated that for a while too. Yeah. Really? And then I would now say that Between the Buried and Me is my all-time favorite metal band. Like yeah. I just was like, this is Whoa. too much. I can't, I, like all I wanted was, I wanted breakdowns, dude. Yeah, I just course. wanted, I wanted yeah. breakdowns. He was, I remember there was like a quote, I remember in the basement, you're like, Ugh, I just never want to sound like this band. And it's Between the Buried and Me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just like, and then, and then right. years later, I'm like, I love Between the Barry and Me. They have no rules. I think that's right. so cool. They do whatever right. they want. Right. Like, right. <laughs> and you're, you're, like, you're, like, you're like buying t-shirts now. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah for sure. <laughs> I fucking love this band. Here's my tattoo. <laughs> right, right. We tour with them like a bunch of yeah, times. Yeah, they're like yeah. buds now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's funny how that goes. Right. It's weird how your, your taste evolved. Yeah. Uh, how long So how long did that, that tip? Because, I mean, you're, it seems like that, that timeline is pretty f frequently, like, it's short because you... you you're playing guitar at 17, 18. You start the band. Yeah. You don't. You don't. You don't like screaming. And then you put out an EP. And then your first record. It's like that's like a span of like two years. It seems. We did move quick. It was really fast. Started, very, like, very quick. Yeah, we started. So I was eighteen when the band actually started. And by the time I was twenty, we were recording our first record for Solid State. You were only twenty when we did that. Wow. Yeah. So you are we were underage drinking that one night. Yes. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> And that's but, why that record's sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we, Adam D made that record sick. Yeah, it wouldn't have been without. <laughs> I I did not know that you guys went with Adam D on on that first record. Yeah, it's sick. And we recorded in this absolutely gorgeous studio called Dark Horse Studios, like outside of Nashville. Mm. It was insane. <laughs> yeah, it was a really. We had no business being there. No, it, it was, was beautiful. It was, a, it was like a dream for. We were young and naive and didn't know anything, and yeah. that was a cool experience for us it was nuts it was like this beautiful like lodge that had like a separate house for like adam and his like produced uh, and his, uh, his engineer his engineer wayne to stay in huh. and like it, the property was just absolutely amazing and we got to stay in this like gorgeous it was like, like a horse farm wasn't it right and it was like this all wooden like building it was amazing but yeah it was a really cool experience and <laughs> it was funny because then we go and make messengers our next record and we're sleeping on the floor in this small studio on air mattresses. Like in the, in the, like in the back of a guy's house yeah. um, from that band Five Iron Frenzy, Frenzy. Yeah. that Christian ska band that you probably have never heard of. Never this guy named Ethan um, owned it. Yeah, he played, he think he played. Was it Five Iron Frenzy or was he in the other one? What was the other one? Uh, Supertones? Supertones. I think it was Five Iron Frenzy, but I could be wrong. It might have been Supertones. It was one of the guitar players from that band built he owned the house, and then one of the other guys from the band, I think, opened a studio in, like, a garage, basically. Right. And that's where we did Messengers. Yep. And, we, yeah, we slept on the air mattresses on the floor in this, like, garage studio and made made Messengers. What? <laughs> yeah, what? Is I don't know if any of those guys are him. That's why I don't know if it's the Supertones or not. Uh, hmm. Search for Ethan Luck. Yeah, Ethan Luck. The name Luck. Ethan Luck. That's a good name. Ethan Luck. Uh, uh, yeah, I just saw. Yeah, there he is. Um, this one to your left that says Antidote Radio. Ethan Luck releases Hard Seas. He he does yeah. all kinds of stuff. Now. Yeah, that's, um, that's Five Iron Frenzy, right? I don't know if I think he's done a lot of stuff. He's a cool dude. Yeah. Shout out to Ethan if you're listening. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> so so what what made you guys go from like. Like the fancy, overly fancy bougie studio to like, hey, we're going to go in a garage sleep. Oh, sleep dude, on the that floor. was just the label on where they put us. We yeah. didn't really. We were we didn't think anything of it at the time. We were just like, cool, you guys have a budget for us. That's amazing. This right. is so much money. We we were just pumped. We were just kids. We didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, a, yeah. a lot of the money went. So we had two Madsen come do it, and he came all Sick. the way from Denmark and stayed that's, that's at incredible. a hotel like close to the studio. So like mm. that. Was, that ate budget up. That was a lot of the budget, you know, having having that happen. So, and we had been touring and grinding on the road yeah. at that point, and we didn't 
we weren't opposed to sleeping on the floor. Like right. we were crashing at people's houses. And right. so sleeping on the floor for five weeks while we made an album, it was fun. We had a great time. I did have a good time. That was a fun record. I mean, this, it, there was nothing wrong with the space. It was fine, but just it was just funny, like comparatively. Of course, yeah. It was just like compared to. Okay, but yeah, it was it was still cool. It was still a good time, and a great timing too. I mean, I mean, two at that time was uh, only two Manson. Yeah, I actually yeah. pulled the picture. He was he was on fire that year. Literally, he. Oh yeah, he did stuff with. He didn't you guys do a record with him? Literally, our our records like uh, our, our 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 parallels are pretty insane. That he he did your record, then he mixed. The cleansing, yeah, yeah, and and they both came out the same year. Yeah, he, yeah, he was killing it. He did a whole bunch of records like That's at so that sweet. time. I forgot about that. Crazy timing, yeah. So where where's he from again? He's from Den- Denmark. Denmark, Denmark yeah. correct? Yeah. Danish music producer. There you go. Towards the end of the studio, you could really tell that he missed home. <laughs> yeah, it got probably, long for him. He missed his wife and kid. Yeah, probably regretted agreeing to like come do this record in America for a month. That was a long time. And what a what state did you guys track the record? That was Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee. that was in the Nashville area as well. We did yeah. our first two records in the Nashville area. Mm-hmm. And then the next two in the Florida area. And now we've done every single one since locally in, in Lancaster. Yeah. Or like at mm-hmm. home. Yeah. We don't want to travel to make our albums anymore. No. Because we travel too much for touring and it's just nice to be home when you're home. It's you nice know? to yeah. go home and like just chill versus like going back to a hotel or staying in the studio and being trapped in that studio environment where you're just constantly thinking about the record. I know some bands really like that yeah. aspect of it, but we don't write in the studio really. So there's no purpose in doing that for us. Like we just go there to get the parts down and then we're done. We do, we write vocals in the studio now. That's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. Well, since you went from the first record, I mean, and your career again, is just fucking, it's, it's, it's very quick. I mean, as your first record comes out and then you, uh, two members go on one tour and then they're pretty much gone. Right. So they, they realize, oh, wait, mm-hmm. this is the life. It's not, which when you go on your first run, I mean, people break very quickly. It really weeds you out pretty fast because you're yeah. just like, oh, I'm sleeping on floors. This isn't mm-hmm. glamorous at all. Like, I'm literally going to go spend a night with this kid I never met, sleep on his floor, and he's going to have five cats that are shedding all over me. And his <laughs> girlfriend yeah. wants to just party all night long. Like, it's just like, you know, it's not it's not very glamorous when you're first starting, and it's really tough. When so, you have no money, and you're like eating yeah, you're broke crackers yeah. and ketchup from the <laughs> from the right local fast food chain that you're stopping at across from the gas station where you're fueling up the van. Like, you do whatever you gotta do to make it. You just mm-hmm. it's, yeah. you're grinding, and it was awesome yeah. and so fun, and we loved it. It yeah. was awesome. I have yeah. very fond memories of those days, sleeping in the van and on overnight drives and stuff. Like it sucked at the time, but it was really bonding and special and right. like I'm really grateful that we have those memories and those opportunities but I couldn't do it again no. like I couldn't go back to that it, no, of course yeah somebody asked me the other day and they're like what would you want to go back and do and I'm like Ugh, the only thing I like you remember when you're in a van and touring and stuff like that that you get to, you got to stop a lot and see things and you'd be like ooh what's that on the side of the road let's check it out like mm-hmm. when you're in a bus you're just not doing that you're sleeping the whole way through you wake up where you're supposed to wake up yeah, and and that's that. Like you, you know, walk to the same coffee shops, yeah. you go to the same restaurants. You right, th- it gets almost very routine. Yeah, like oh, we're yeah. playing here. I know what I'm gonna do that day. Right, because yeah. this is what we do when we're in Boise. Or right, whatever. and I was just like, I don't. I'm like, that was a fun time, but would I want to go back and do it again? Like, no, I wouldn't. Like, I wouldn't want to be a 38 year old and doing overnight drives in a van trying to make the next show. <laughs> like, I just, yeah. I just wouldn't want to do carrying that. our own guitar cabs in and right. hauling them off after we played a stuffy right. 200 cap bar that was soaking wet, coming off stage and then loading your gear, piling back in the van, driving overnight, like that kind of stuff. Like, there's, uh, there's just a level of quality of life and comfort that we are at now that would be really difficult to go back and, are, and repeat. We are accustomed yeah. to our cushy lifestyle we've created. <laughs> Which isn't even that cushy no, if you think yeah, about yeah, it. But, you guys yeah. earned it. Well, right. I mean, I mean, you guys fucking grinded. I mean, I, I, I've, I've seen you guys grind. Yeah. yeah. And it's not like you guys, not like it's just, oh, we, I, this career just appeared out of, out of nowhere. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah, it was a grind. Yeah. We did the van and trailer thing for a while. I know. I mean, we just, we waited really long to go to a bus. Dude. Oh, I'm yeah. trying, trying not to bring personal shit in, into this, but I remember like, you were like my personal example. I wish we, we did what, what what they did. Like you guys just grinding out for as long as as you could. Yeah, it was it was, it was smart. Well, because we, got- we knew once you go bust, you don't go back. Yeah, and it's expensive. It was a yeah. big. It, it was amazing switching yeah. to a bus. We loved it. It was so novel and fun. 
We just got pushed to the brink where it was like to put on the show that we needed to put on to grow our band, we needed crew guys. And to have more crew guys, we had to go to a bus. Interesting. So you guys like, waited until it was time to like grow. Yeah, we're you know, just like, look, like we're obvious. just gonna keep putting on the same exact show over and over and over again unless we can unless we can grow and add people to help us. Mm-hmm. And so it just kinda got to that point where we're like, all right, we need crew. And we were about to go out on that tour. We were, we were gonna do a co headline tour with Premium Horizon for the AP tour. Mm-hmm. And we were just like we have to bring a bus. We're like, because we know that they're going to go out there and spend the money to put on a good show, mm. and we need to be able to also do that, so we don't look like we're getting crushed every night. So like we, mm-hmm. we at that point we're like, all right, we're gonna take a bus, get some texts and things like that, and and go from there. And then, you know, at the end of the day, we looked at like the budget and we walked home with. It. We're like, yeah, that wasn't so bad. I guess we can keep going here. And it, it, this is yeah. it. Yeah, yeah that's that was it. the tour. Wow, what what year was this? 2010, yeah. and yeah. that artwork was not something we were allowed to say yay or nay on. They just made us use it, and I right. hate, I still hate it to this day. It's like a 60-year-old punk guy. I know, and they wrapped our bus in it. And what? I, like, what? Oh, no. There's two the yeah. bus was wrapped in that <laughs> Yeah, <crack>. Sick. Sick. <laughs> you had two, me- two metalcore <laughs> bands with this 60-year-old punk guy on it. How it's does that weird. make sense? But bless the AP tour for... Well, I, yeah, that was cool. It, it was, was a fun, it was a really fun tour, and we can say we co-headlined with Bring Me the Horizon, which is hilarious yeah. now yeah. Uh, with what they've done with their career. Props so, to those guys. Would you guys consider yourselves competitive? Because that sounds like a very competitive thing to do. To, what to do? What to like try and like match them? Yeah, I think that it's not. It's sure. I guess it's competitive, but it's also just trying to keep pace. Keep you pace know, is a good like, way to put it. You don't want to go out there, especially when you're on like a co build tour like that and, and get, you know, schmealed by the other band. Like you don't mm-hmm. wanna like Yeah, you don't wanna get schmealed. Yeah, you don't wanna yeah. <laughs> but that one knows I I don't wanna get schmealed. Is that PA Dutch private? I don't know. Yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. heard that word in my life. <laughs> my dad says it. Okay. Anyway, so What does like, schmealed mean? I don't crushed. Know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that. Crushed. Um Crushed, you don't wanna okay. like, go out there and just like put on a worse show than yeah. the band that you're supposed to be on the same level as. Totally. You know, and that's just kind of what our thought process was. Mm-hmm. And our manager at the time that we had, he's like, yeah, you guys should probably get a bus and do it right and make sure yeah. that you are staying on the same level. And mm-hmm. so we went from there. And then at the end of the day, you know, we just kind of looked at it. We were paying for like two hotel rooms a night. Mm. And adds up. so it wasn't like it does. It adds up. It adds up. So it wasn't like that huge of a jump, mm-hmm. but um, it was enough. But, it, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, we looked at the budget and everything came out okay for us. So we were just like, all right, we're going to keep going this way because this was definitely way better than doing the van and trailer. <laughs> There's that so, cover. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. That's a sick cover. Oh, man. How, how old are you guys there? That was 2010. Yeah. That was the cover wow. we did because doing the AP tour, that was like one of the big perks. So you got a cover mm-hmm. of... Mm. Uh, so I've been what twenty six. It's like if we get a cover, we'll fucking mm-hmm. do the tour. That's exactly that was the kind of thing because <laughs> it, it, that was a big deal back in the day when yeah, and then, media was still big. And then two thousand eleven was a really big year for us. So like it definitely helped us in the end, like doing mm-hmm. that tour and doing this cover and like that was when print like we were saying that's when print was still really good and AP was like yeah. the biggest one you could get and so in our world yeah, yeah. it was a big deal so. Yeah, like I said, 2011, that ended up being a really good year for us. Like, we went and did mm. Warp Tour, and that year, Warp Tour 2011 was huge. That was a Because that was year. really only one main stage, and it was right as a day to remember was just going, like, mm. like blowing up. Yep. And so it was literally just, like, because there was only one main stage and not that many bands on that Warp Tour, it was just mashing every single day. Like, you just played to the biggest possible crowd every single day. It was awesome. Timing, dude. Yeah. Wow, you can't you that's, can't plan that stuff. There's yeah. a lot of like Brent said earlier, there's a lot of luck in how things go. Right. With just the music industry and the career paths and stuff. Things have to fall in line. Yeah. There's a lot there's a lot that couldn't there's a lot that could go wrong and a lot that could go right, I guess. Yeah. I mean, a lot that's kind of out of your control. You just try to do you try to make the best decisions you can with the information you got and hope for the best. That's that's like Yep navigating the music industry kind of mm-hmm. like on the touring level i think for sure yeah i mean you guys have a lot of experience with that i mean i mean branch jb i mean you guys managed to ban the first three three records we do now too and now now and now yeah. too yeah. Then, yeah we've been always very active on that side of the business like very i i like i really enjoy that aspect of, of doing a band like yeah. the business side of things and and mm-hmm. i'm i'm grateful for the years we had proper management because they were really helpful and 
getting different things set up for us. But then it, in 2016, I think, is when Brett and I started taking over, or I guess we we took over managing yeah. the band then, and yeah. haven't turned back since. And it's been going it's been going well. We've so always just felt like no one that. cares about your band more than the guys in your band. So like yeah. You know, it's 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 easy when you have a manager for some things to like fall through the cracks and there'd be miscommunication and there's not in this in this scenario. People mm-hmm. just come to us directly and then we immediately have that information and we can make good choices based on that. Like that's the goal. Yeah, you guys uh sounds like you guys all make like a decision as a band, you know. We try to. Anything big is a vote, for sure. It's a vote, really? Yeah. And if you lose, it's kinda like, oh, sorry. Oh. But we try to make sure everyone's opinion is heard and there are scenarios where it's just like, all right, everyone kind of needs to like this. But for the most part, it's yeah. like a democratic thing. And totally. we've all just kind of gotten used to sometimes your opinion isn't the one that gets used or sometimes your idea isn't the one mm-hmm. that gets used, you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's funny, like the older you get, the more emotion you take out of it. Right. You know, it's just pure, it's just pure brain going in. You yeah, know, I mean, right. you, you learn that the, that the thing that started out as your art is also your art, but also is your livelihood. So you need to make good choices and kind of remove emotion sometimes. Mm-hmm. Have you found that when it comes to making decisions that it's funny, like when you make a decision based on what your mind wants, the music, it actually does help the music and, and the art and the riffs get better. Right. That, that, that happened with us, you know, take, taking the emotion out. But when you're writing songs, you, it's like you, you, now you could do this. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's certainly helpful to, like, if everyone's firing on the same page, if you can get the whole band on the same page, be it with your writing or how you're operating the band, things mm-hmm. just run so much better when you guys can, when, the, when it's a united front versus, yeah. like, those situations where it's, like, three of us went it one way and two of us went it the other, and then it's, like, mm-hmm. ooh, because, you mm-hmm. know, the majority is majority, but then you got almost half the band's not happy with the decision of what's what's happening Especially when making decisions in the studio, like that, that because yeah, I mean we all get married to our own ideas, of course. With, as, mm-hmm. And if it's been recorded, yeah. um, you know, you get stu- you get stoked, and then you get outvoted, and you're like, oh my god, like this is yeah. crushing. I'm crushed now as an yeah. artist. Like this yeah. really hurts. Yeah. And then you get over it, and you listen to the album a year later, and you're like, oh, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that other way, but this is fine now. I'm used to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And sometimes, oh, wait, is this, is this better? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. That <laughs> certainly is the case. And at, at the time, it seems like the fucking end of the world. Like the sky's falling. Yeah. Like, oh, ruined the song. Good. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to quit. I hate this song now. Right. I, I hate it. So we, we, we're never going to play it live. Yeah. And then it's, your, it's fucking like, huge. It's like your staple. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Then it's your single. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. This is Whitewasher now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys meet Jake? Because cause he came in uh, after the first record came out. He just, I, we were on like our search for a singer and he, a friend told him that we were looking for a singer and he hit me up on MySpace. Oh my goodness. And I sent him like, yeah. And, <laughs> Let's go. And I sent him, <laughs> you know, and well, he sent me then like a demo he had done. I'm like, oh, this is pretty good with his, with his band. I'm like, oh, it's pretty mm-hmm. good. And I was like, hey, do you want to come up and, you know, just try out? You would just like kind of just mess around with us in our practice space. And he was from South Carolina. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, I can drive up. I can be there. I, I mean, he came up pretty quickly. And, but in the meantime, we had already had a friend who was going to do our next like short tour with us. Mm. But we were still auditioning guys in case like that didn't work out. Oh, side note, that tour was with Sinai Beach, who's from this area, right? Yeah. Do you yes. remember that band? Yeah. Of course. And, Sinai and, Beach, and, dude. and Oblige. And Oblige. Oh, wow. Yeah. Remember those yeah. guys? Of course. So yeah. that you can close continue talking. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought you might know those guys. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. close friends. That's yeah. cool. So, they, so yeah, he came up. He tried out. Well, at first he came up and he's like, can I just eat something first? And we're like, no, let's just get this done. And so he came in the practice space. We played like 3750 by Acacia Strain. Or we played the, we oh, played, my we gosh. Played, we oh, sorry, we played the song Car Bomb. Car Bomb. Which is like the intro to the album 3750. Yeah, it's just a oh, breakdown. Yeah. And we were just like, just like kind of scream scream. over this. Let's yeah. hear your voice. Like, yeah. Dun, 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 yep. dun, 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 exactly. Dun, yeah. dun, dun, dun. yeah, and he, so he just screamed and... His voice sounded great, and we we're like, "All right, like this is probably gonna be the guy." But we unfortunately already committed to doing this tour with this other guy, mm. so we were just like, "All right, like you just be ready. Like uh, we have another tour in like February, March, whenever it was that you can be on." 
and mm-hmm. then um but yeah he just we just went with him from there he lived at my parents house for like the first six months and then yeah wow. it was he lived with me at my parents house yeah and so yeah we just kind of went from there and then he was in the band and then our bass player jordan he quit shortly after to he wanted to be home and get married and you know have mm-hmm. a normal job and all that stuff so of course he he did that and then we found dustin really quickly but it was the same exact scenario where we had already told another bass player that they could do our right. that they could do a tour with us who had tried out before Dustin and so we did that tour Dustin came up and tried out we're like alright you can do the next one and then mm. you know he just fit in like like a glove and we're like alright you're in and I remember Jake was bummed because Jake's like tryout process was like four or five months long and we're just like eh and then like we had like a moment we're like alright man you're in the band like this has been going really well and then Dustin was immediately just like in the band yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did get in really quick, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Oh my goodness. He did like literally a two week tour, and we're like, "All right, this is great. You know, you're just in the band now." We're like, "You look cool. You sound cool. You're yeah. really good at bass, and you have your own gear. You can be in the band." Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's like, "What about me? Do right. I do, do, do I look cool and sound cool yeah. too? Yeah. You fucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. He so, did have a harder tryout process, unfortunately, yeah. but it worked out. And well, it's it's the singer, right? right. A, that's a big deal. That, that's, dude. A, that's a big I deal. Mean, yeah. I remember our like label was like i don't know if you guys can come back from this and we're like oh all right cool thanks right (laughs) that's a that's a big move because i mean you already you already kind of like established your your sound and then after a first record losing what you kind of established that's a that's a tough yeah thing to come back from you guys seem to come back from it i mean i guess from the outside like seamlessly yeah well it worked out really well actually in the end because Josh, our original singer, only did one tour. Mm. So, and the album had barely been out for like a month or two before oh, okay. like before he quit the band. A lot of people didn't even know that yeah. Jake wasn't the singer at the yeah. time. They just assumed it was the dude that was on yeah. the album. Because he started touring with us literally like two months after the record came out. So, yeah. it was just like... Wow. I forgot about that. Yeah, so it was mm. a really like seamless transition. And like, I don't think we made like some huge post or anything like that. No, we kept it very quiet. That's right. We like, yeah. we were like, we're not telling anyone that our singer quit. We're just going to keep touring and get a new one and, and act like there. everything is the same as it's always been. I mean, mm. the stuff, word didn't spread as quickly back then. Right. Social media wasn't it's nearly just, what it is it's now. It's just MySpace. Right. Right. Yeah. And we weren't a big band. We were just no. a baby band coming up. We had mm. barely people. We were very early on in our career. Like, Messengers was like the 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 coming out album. You know, we yeah. hadn't we hadn't had that yet. We just had like our. Yeah. It was like an introduction. We were still figuring things out. So yeah, yeah you guys really found your sound on on the next record. I mean, Dustin, he's a ripper, dude. Yeah, like, he rips. Uh, I remember like seeing seeing him on tour practice on like guitar and he would just play like black dollar murder songs yeah I'm, he's I'm, like, sick. I'm like dude you're fucking jesus <laughs> yeah he's he's really good at guitar and like now like in this set we're playing on this tour he plays guitar a bunch and he has been for the last few years now we would cha- create instruments jb or i will play bass and dustin plays guitar if it's mm. like a song that he was really involved in the guitar writing process he plays guitar for it because That's Brett like, and I don't want to learn his parts. I can't play. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> pretty much flat out, I can't. Like he, he just has like these insane guitar solos, and I'm like, ah, I can't play that. I can't either. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, he's really good at guitar. Yeah, he's really good at everything he does musically. Right. He's like the jack of all trades. He can play drums. I mean, he had like a side project he put out that was like a pop punk thing where he sang, played drums, played guitar, played bass, did everything. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So he, that's why he got added to the band immediately. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. We didn't even know that. We didn't even know what his potential was at right. the time. Got yeah, lucky with that one. Oh, there's, there's more of, of that luck and timing. Yeah, right. I mean, no I, kidding. Dude, what, I mean, what a great addition. I mean, I mean, you're, what's kind of fascinating about, about uh, August Burns Red as well is like, I mean, I, I could say it because I'm, I'm an outsider, but your, your band's massive. And, but it's still like, but you're, it, there's like this, you guys are technical though. Like, yeah. like, like your riffs are fucking crazy. It's not the most accessible music, I guess. No, uh, it's not. It's but not. but the way the way I don't know, I can't even put words or put it into a sentence, but the way like your songs are, are, are structured and it's like I, I don't know, like what how how do you guys do that? <laughs> I don't think there really is a structure. No. It's just yeah. it's it's not prog, but it's not really structured in any way either. We just write songs. I don't know how to, yeah. to say like there's seldom is there a firm structure. You know, we'll use a part or a, 
a melody multiple times sometimes. And I do think that as we're getting older, I'm more interested in the song feeling like a song and less of a mashup of parts like it would have yeah. been back in the day. Like, I feel like we, we yeah. did a lot of Thrill Seeker. The entire album is just parts smashed together. Yeah. Like, I'm not particularly fond of that album at this point. It was a starting point. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know how to write a song. And now I think there's at least... Our, we don't have these solid structures, but there's kind of themes and stuff that, that tie everything together. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not accessible music, and it is uh, again. It feels lucky that people have yeah. been so welcoming to listen to it and let us experiment and still stick with the band. Like we have very loyal fans, which is um, it's a great gift. Right. It just seems like the like maybe messengers came out at like a really good time That's for like metal stuff because like. At that time, like metal core was, you know, you do a scream verse and then you're gonna sing your chorus. Like that was metal core. That's what literally like everyone was doing. And then yep. Messengers was just like a balls to the walls, just like here's a heavy record that has very few repeating parts and just like go, mm -hmm. go, go. And I think it was just and there's no singing, there's, there's no, no choruses. Yeah. I think it was just slightly different enough to like catch people's ear and then it just kinda went from there. And I think we just picked up a lot of fans because at that time metal core was really growing. Like, it mm -hmm. was really big. You had, like, Azalea Dying and, like, mm -hmm. Under Oath and just, like, really big metalcore bands. And so I think that that – and, like, Kill Switch. I think that that just, like, helped our band in the long run because the genre was so big. And then we sounded just slightly different enough to, like, kind of, like, bring people over. Yeah, you, you still had your own sound, but you're also a part of this, like, exploding genre. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. One, I'm sure you remember this when your band's coming up and you're young and you're like the like cool new band, but you don't have any headlining numbers or anything. So right. you're cheap to bring on the road. Oh, yeah. You get every good support tour yeah, because true. you're like, yeah, we'll definitely do that tour for 250 bucks. A day. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. like, like, yeah, let's open for Asley Dine and, and right. Uh. And every, like, we just did so many big tours around that time because we were cheap. We didn't have headline numbers right. and, and mm -hmm. we just got to play in front of lots of people. It was a great time to grow and just get our name and, and faces in front of people. I think we literally did what? We did Azalea Dying Tour into the Lamb of God Tour in Europe back into an Azalea Dying yeah. Tour. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And, and, and then into Warp Tour. This and then into the Warp Tour. And so, and it, like he's saying, just because like, I think we did this, we were main support to Azalea Dying and I think we did it for like, Seven fifty a night. No less, dude. Maybe I like, remember it was. Like it, I think it was five hundred bucks. Yeah. And I, I think the first leg of it we did for two fifty. Yeah. Maybe. And they said to us, "Why didn't you guys counter? We would have paid you five hundred. We're yeah. like, I don't know. We just right. want to do the tour. <laughs> right. <laughs> we had no idea what we were doing. Right. It's like, well, let's see. Like, how many top brahmas do do, do I need? Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> two fifty. Right. <laughs> yeah. We were just happy to be on a a tour that was a big tour for us at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you did the uh, on their tour. Yeah, that, with that, you guys. That, that, that was sick. That yeah. was so fun, dude. And I was such a big fan of On Earth. Like, Oncoming Storm Real. was a really important metal album for me. Well, and Darkest Hour was there. Yeah, and I yeah. loved Dark Undoing, Undoing Ruin, Ruin and, so and, and, and Deliver Us were like two of my to this day they were two of my favorite metal albums. I remember just sitting there watching Chris Norris warm up and just being like, mm, "That's really good." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he was so sick. Like, he was such a shredder. Wow, dude. look at you go. That was a fun tour. It was. I remember I was uh, the. Uh, I forgot where that first uh, show was. New York. The very first show of the tour was at the Wrecker Theater in Towson, Maryland. Maryland. Okay. Yes. And I remember. I like, think. I remember all of. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. Because that, that was our first like big run, and I remember like we we don't know what's going on, what what like what we're doing, but I remember like we everyone's in in the venue and um on the floor, and I saw you guys have like your road cases out. Like you're yeah. you're messing with like cables and and like and and, and the amps I'm like so I started doing it too yeah. for no reason <laughs> I'm like well oh, well JP and Brent are doing it so I'm I'm gonna do it too yeah that I, is I, hilarious I, yeah. I had no idea <laughs> yeah, like, dude I remember there was just one show in particular in that oh tour that God. was awful it was at uh for us our set was just a nightmare it was at the Lincoln Theater in Raleigh oh my gosh what happened that night I don't a remember a bunch of my stuff broke like what you get oh uh, <laughs> yeah it was brutal but. And I remember watching some bands from the floor that night, and but yeah, that, that oh yeah, that tour was fun. That tour was a good time. It, it was. was on Earth is a blast for sure. 
Yeah, and they're such a staple in the genre. Right? Yeah, you know? yeah. They were one of those bands that I feel like they influenced a lot of bands that went on to have like more success than them, unfortunately. Right. For, I don't know why, but just because who knows this, there's who just knows why one band pops off and another one doesn't like. Sure. Like Parkway Drive to me sounded a lot like Unearth back mm-hmm. in the day when they started and yeah. look what they've done, like the right. career they've built. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've of course evolved their sound since, but, um, and even like what ABR has done, like we were definitely influenced by Unearth, mm-hmm. and I feel that's too. Yeah. I, I'm I, I feel grateful for what that band brought to you know the scene and the songs that were that yeah, were sure. influential to us. Yeah, Oncoming Storm. Oh my goodness. Dude. Yeah. Oh my. What well, What was their first record? Uh, Strings of Strings Consciousness? of Conscious. Conscious. Yeah. Strings of Conscious. Yeah. That was and then they did the Endless EP right that's after what, that, like, and that Endless EP was so sick. That's what really was like. Poof. That NSP, yeah, was amazing. I went to see Unearth in 2004, and I drove like four hours to go see them, and every time I die, and Evergreen Terrace Mm -hmm. in this bar. We all went down there. Yeah. And, and I got kicked in the balls during Unearth in the nice. pit. Was so that the one when oh. we went <laughs> down there and sandals. it was it was sold out? Like we drove down there. Yeah, it was and it sold, sold out. out. And then Ash, um, who owns Sumerian Records, Ash, Ash owns Sumerian. Abelson. He was the Shout promoter out. for the show. Oh, sick! And we didn't did we didn't know him at that point? No, yet. we didn't know him. And he he walked us in the back. He was like he, he snuck us in. He for some reason I don't know why, but was just like, and I think I, we probably were like, dude, we drove four hours, we can't get in, and he's. Took pity on us and walked us through the back yeah. and into the show. I don't know how we got like, connected with him though. I don't know how it ended up being that we talked to the promoter. Like I don't, I have maybe no we clue. were in with him already, Brent, because we we were in with that band Reflux that he sang for back in the day, and we would have played with Reflux at that. Or maybe the show was in two thousand three before that. I think it was before that because we didn't know Ash, and then it was random that all of a sudden, or maybe we talked to him that day about the fact that we were playing. We definitely didn't talk to him that day. No, because but cause then we, we started playing fun. shows with him. And I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that we ended up, but yeah, we ended up linking up with him a lot and playing with Reflux. And it was, it was hilarious. Cause we we're just like, you're the guy who snuck us in that venue. when we tried to go see Unearth. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> thank you. G- did you really drive four hours? Yeah. yeah. We drove Damn. four hours. Cause we were like, this is the best bill. That bill dude. was we, awesome. We loved E-Ted. We loved Unearth. We loved Evergreen Terrace. Right. And we're like, we have to see that show. And it was probably in like a 300 cap. It bar. was. That was and really. And it, uh, if I remember right, it had like a black and white like dance floor kind of setup. Yeah, like a check, like a checker floor. Yeah, tile floor. Holy moly! I dude. remember on uh, every time I die coming out and Andy just doing the widest power stance I've ever seen, of and they started their song Romeo Go Go off of yeah. uh, Hot Damn, and I was just like, oh my god, this is so sick. Yeah. Holy crap! I want. Dude. I want to do that. Yeah, it's funny the uh, the memories from back in the day that the things that right. stick in our brains it's crazy how it stays with you and you maybe like some consciously like started doing that yeah oh dude right. I, right. I still think about how wide that his power stance was and like how sick that looked I'm like I need to get low like on stage <laughs> like, like that looks sick yeah <laughs> okay since we're on a subject we, we need to address something okay JB, what's up with the sandals, man? Oh, I don't know. It just kind of be- <laughs> we all used to wear them back in the yeah. day it oh, was yeah. like uh, we went through that like preppy polos and oh sandals God. phase as a band. Dude, I remember, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I remember wearing flip-flops, and I stopped wearing them because I was getting shin splints. Oh, my goodness. And I was just like, oh, I, gotta, I can't do this anymore. Like, I, I think that it's these sandals, and I actually think it was actually because I got fat. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm not I'm being, the sandals. I'm being too chunky, dude. My, right. uh, th- these sandals cannot support this fucking yeah. riff. And I remember talking to our <laughs> managers. We had just got done playing like the Gramercy Theater in New York. And they're like, "You're not wearing your flip flops." I'm just like, no, "Oh my god, it, it became no. a thing." Yeah, like you're not. Wearing, and I'm like, "No, I'm like, I have shin splints. I'm going to shoes." And they're like, "Oh, yeah, okay, that's probably a good idea." I'm like, man, Thanks. man, yeah, you guys sold out. Right? Yeah, we right. were total sellouts, bro. Oh like, there you go. This is from like two weeks ago. This is right there. They are. Look at that. JB going strong, dude. I and got if, multiple pairs on tour in case one breaks. And if you read through the comments of this, every, everyone's just like, "I don't want to win the guitar. I want to win your flip flops." Oh, it's oh like, that, <laughs> that's nice. There it is. They're not. They're not signature flip flops. Andrew Hart Le. <laughs> what uh, JP? What made you decide to go with the two stripes? That is a funny. Well, it's not a funny story. Randomly on Warp Tour, I believe it was back in 2011. Um, our guitar tech Kevin and I just put some 
tape. But e -tape electric tape yeah. on one of my on my green guitar, and it was yellow the first time. And then we switched it to orange for a bit, and then we went white, and then I left it at white, and that was just my thing. And then eventually, um, it just stuck. It stuck, and I liked the way it looked. And then Ibanez was kind enough to do a signature model of it, and now it's just kind of my thing. So so first right. started off with uh, electrical tape. Yeah, it was just a just a kind of a board on warp tour put some tape on the guitar interesting yeah is green your favorite color um yeah i'd say green's my favorite color up there at least yeah although i'm not playing the green guitar on the well i i, I have a green guitar on this tour i have that one but i've been playing a nice white, I've been dude playing a white one and then brent you're playing the more like like the like the telly shape yeah i play key solo okay yeah how recent is that uh it's been a couple years now a couple yeah. years yeah I just really like them. The Solo 6, it's just the Tele style body, body that they have. Nice. And it's just comfortable. I like the, like, I, have, I don't have long fingers. And, like, I Dustin let me play one of his Kiesels. And I was like, oh, this is immediately more comfortable than my Ibanez. Mm. Because Ibanez has, like, the wide fretboard, wide flat fretboard. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm like, this, this helps me riff more. Yeah. You know, pretty I'm, much. I'm, I'm ripping. You know, and you know, and and your fingers aren't as, aren't as chunky. Right. I'm sorry for like, right. shaming you the whole podcast. I'm no, sorry, it's man. fine. I'm sorry, dude. Man. I totally get. <laughs> Gosh, dude. you're gonna get you're getting canceled. <laughs> right. After this, I'm the fat shame. shame the, the, the fat shame. People fat are coming shame. for you. Well, that's gonna be in the title. August Prince Red. Fat shame. Fat shame. That's gonna be the name. <laughs> that's gonna be the name of our next album. Fat shame. Dude, how was your guys' live stream? Oh, they were it looked, great, man. It looked, it, it looked sick. You know, it's cool. Um, it was a lot of work. <laughs> it was a lot of work, but you guys yeah. know how much. I mean, you did yeah, some a lot. crazy. Oh yeah, yours was like you a guys world did some crazy or stuff with that. It was, it was a terrible idea, but yeah, it was it was it was well, a lot of work. I think we have the same business manager. Yeah. Are you guys with Level? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, I won't drop any names, but um, our business manager, you know, our dude was like mm -hmm. really praising what you guys were doing. Yeah. Like he thought mm -hmm. it was such a cool idea and was like, yeah. like really innovative and was really proud of you guys. Wow. So yeah, I, it was a, it was a really cool idea that suicide science had during the pandemic for yeah, live I, streams. I swear if you did like one, right. It was one show. You could have done it that way yeah. in retrospect, but what you did was, was special. I and think. That, and, that, Thank and you. at that point, everyone was just trying to figure out what something to do that was like interesting and different and special. Yeah. You just didn't know what was going to work. And it's, it was tough because you don't like, who are you going to call? Right. I mean, uh, hey, did you try this? How how would that work? You're just like, right. we have, you have like no like blueprint. We're just trying. It was uncharted to territory. Right. Yeah. 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 No one, like no one knew what was going to be good or how it was going to pan out. Like we actually kind of like sat back and watched for a little bit. Yeah. To like see wow. what was going to happen. And then we saw Under Rose went really well and we hit up their mm. manager um, and we're like, hey, like how'd this go for you? Who'd you use? Like and all this stuff, and we got advice from him. Oh wow! And so we ended up linking up with like a bunch of people that way, and nice. we just kind of went from there with it. Sick, yeah. Yours is awesome. Yeah, I mean, thank it, you. Like I said, it, it's it's the amount of tour for a work. It's the amount of work for like a whole tour that you put into like one show. Yeah, like it was a lot. And yeah, then essentially, yeah. We also run our own web store, so it was like double the work. We it worked out great for us. We ended up being able to run the live stream through our web store. Mm -hmm. So you had to buy tickets for the live stream through our web store that also had all the merchandise for That's the live sick. stream. So it it panned out okay for us, but it was a ton of work. It was a lot. But we had nothing else to do. Right. We had, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It was the pandemic. So. I was like, I'm going to sit down at my computer and we're going to work on this. Like, it, yeah, we had nothing else to do, and it just – it 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 was cool. But do I want to do it again? No. Yeah. So should, should I put more ice cream on my apple pie, or should we do this fucking virtual <laughs> – so, oh, I was right. putting ice cream on the apple pie at night after the show. Of course, right. yeah. Right. <laughs> and like, were you guys like, uh, like scared or like worried? Because I mean, you're at the worst timing possible, right? Like, like your merch company went bankrupt and didn't, and didn't even right. fucking tell you guys, right? At like the worst time, because that's like our that's like our main source of income, and then they didn't even tell you, right? That is going. Out of business. Wait, did you you guys were with Bam Merch as well? No. Oh, okay, you just heard that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I we mean, must have talked about that. I did. I've okay. talked about it. But yeah, it it so like it, it that's seemed, scary. It seemed like the worst possible timing, but in the end, it was the best thing because like mm. we had signed like a deal with them where we got an advance or whatever, and then they had the rights to sell our merchandise, and 
to be frank, like we had we had had new like account managers constantly, and so mm-hmm. we weren't selling a ton in web. So it was just something that we were mm-hmm. just like, all right, we're never going to recoup this, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then randomly, like you know, all of a sudden, no more touring, and we're like, yeah, maybe they'll be cool and let us sell some stuff in the web so that can come directly to our pockets and things like that. Mm-hmm. And we just get like an email from the old account manager that's just like, hey, heads up here, they're going under. Like there's no one there to reply to your emails. Like they're going oh. bankrupt, and we're like. Okay. Like it's just an empty oh. warehouse now. And they had they had a, how many pieces of our merch? Thousands. There was thousands of yeah unsold stock, and they had a debt collector come after us for the unrecouped advance. Yeah, and we what? Were, yeah. Oh yeah, I was freaking out at the time. I was like, we Are you had, serious? Yeah. yeah, they had the debt. Like someone bought all their debt and kind of like sent us like threatening yeah. emails, and we had to get on the phone. And our lawyer was just like, look, like in their contract with your company that you bought, that says that this is an advance. It's not a debt. They're like. He's like, I'm sorry that your business didn't good do a good enough job recouping this advance. When well, he was also like, and this like, band can't do anything. It's during yeah. the pandemic. They yeah. have no money. They can't pay yeah. this debt. Because he knew that it was just a, like a MP- racket. They were just trying a- to threaten us to yeah. scare us into like pain. Damn. And we eventually did work something out where we just bought all of our stock from them. We just yeah, we ended up buying the stock that they had sitting there because they were just going to let it rot in a warehouse. Mm. And so we ended up buying like all these pieces of merchandise for what ended up being like pennies on the dollar. Because we're like, look, we'll buy our stock for this. Cause That's they, all we're going to pay them. Yeah, we'll, we'll just buy our old stock. Yeah, they were just like, how about you guys pay us this much money? And our lawyer was like, no. And they're like, how about this much? No. And their lawyer was like, we'll give you this much for the merch. And they're like, fine. They were just hired to get whatever they yeah. could out of it. There was a lot of bands that were getting, uh, I don't want to say threatened, but mm-hmm. we'll say threatened. It was threatened. Yeah. At, the same, at the same time. That's a whole other business that yeah. was going, yeah. going on that behind was, the scenes. That was sure. anxiety-inducing at the time, yeah, for sure. So th- and then, you know, it ended up just being, I was just like, well, we have this merch now. We're going to open our own web store. And we just learned how to open a Shopify store, and that was that. Wow, dude. Yeah. And especially like, and, and you don't even know like if you're even gonna be able to go out again and make no. and, 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 and make your living right. that that you've been building at that point like the past eighteen years. You know, right. you know that's what yeah, that would definitely give me some anxiety. Yeah, it was sure. you know? it was pretty brutal. Like to get that call and to get those emails, you're just like, uh, like I remember when that email came in. I like we were both just like. Oh shit! Like is this like, is this real? Like, is, is this, this real? real? Yeah. And then we learn, yeah, this is real, and we're like, oh god, okay. It's so it's so strange. I remember like back like back in the day, like why do we need a lawyer? Yeah, and then like this things just happen. Yeah, like, every, every like every once in a while, every years pass, and like oh, this is why. Right. <laughs> you, 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 you just don't know. Right. You know, this guy got to be safe. You know, for sure. You know, well, well, speaking of you guys having a career, I mean, you guys. I built your your band to a point where like you get nominated for like a Grammy. Like, right. like you know, how, how was that? Wild. Yeah, it's how, one of those things that? you don't expect. Yeah. Uh, it was. Uh, I don't know. It was, yeah, it was a surreal moment. We got to go to the Grammys twice. We didn't win both times we were nominated, but it was still cool to be in the conversation. Right. Like that yeah. was that was special. I don't know if we'll ever get that opportunity again. It's definitely one of those things you don't ever count on happening. And but, we had like no clue. Like we didn't the fir- like the first time around. We had no idea like how the process worked. Or the fact that like our label was even kind of shopping us out there to be nominated, because mm-hmm. like you like, the you get put in to be able to be nominated, and then everyone has to vote on you if you, mm-hmm. they want to nominate you. And yeah. you so met, we had yeah. we had no idea. And our product manager at the time, Jenny Reader, she was wow. just like hustling behind the scenes, and we had like no clue. And we just like woke up the one morning to text message that was like, "Hey, you guys got nominated for a Grammy," and we're like. What? <laughs> yeah, we were on tour in Lawrence, Kansas, playing yeah. the Granada Theater. I'm yeah. sure you guys have been there. Oh my goodness! In Kansas? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's and we, sick. And we had like no clue. We were just like, "What?" Got like, a phone call from my kidding? wife telling me. Yeah, she's like, "You were nominated for a Grammy." I'm like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. half asleep. Wait, so it was public first? Yeah, and yeah. Then, and then it, wow, yeah, yeah. Like, we had no clue because they, you know, they 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 release all the categories and who's nominated in each category. That's like you know public information when the submission and voting process is over. And then there's another yeah. voting process over the... I, like, screenshot of the text that nominee. came in from our... These pictures are insane. ...from our manager. <laughs> and wow. we were just like... And I remember Jake was like, a Grammy? Like a real Grammy? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 like a real one? Well, yeah. It's some kind of fucking joke or something? That, right. It, didn't, it definitely didn't feel real. It was wow. weird. It was definitely strange. And then, like, 
the second time around, we like, kind of knew how things worked. So, like, you know, we got to go in and, like, vote for ourselves, that kind of thing. And, and it just wasn't enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that was fun. But, yeah. It, Dang. That's a beautiful picture, man. Yeah, it was really neat. That oh, I, One of those things that you don't even think about. Right. No, like that, you know, no, and then like not it, in and the then, style of music, man. You and, well, it, especially because like I can't remember, like I think like maybe Asley Dying had been nominated prior to us, but like it wasn't mm-hmm. like uh, there was like a bunch of like heavy, super heavy metal bands that aren't on the radio getting nominated for Grammys. Like that's why it was such a surprise, I think. Because people are like, who is this band that got nominated for a Grammy? Like, you're not on the radio. You're not, like, you know, you have, you know... You're not 4-4. Four, four. You haven't no. sold, you know, you haven't sold, right. like, half a million albums. Like, they're like, what the heck is this? And then, because I remember, like, thinking about who we were going up against, and it was all, like, household names. Like, it was, mm-hmm. like, Ice-T and, you know... Oh, Body Count. Body Count and, like, all these, like, other, like, really big metal bands. And we're just like, oh, okay. I think Ghost won the first time, and who won the second time? Uh, Mastodon. Mastodon. Yeah. Which is cool. Good for them. Right. Man, what a what a career that that's that's still going. Yeah. You know, just playing like like the style of music that, that you guys been, been playing. It just goes to show like the like your consistency has been in, insane and like you have this this fan base that just, you know, has been with you the whole yeah. the whole time. It's cool. You know? We're very lucky to have such devoted fans. That's definitely like the biggest They have carried us. Right. That's definitely the biggest thing. Like we look out at the crowd at these shows for twenty anniversary tour and they're like all in their thirties. Like it's Whoa. just like Well, not all. Not all, but like <laughs> a huge a huge portion of them are like mm-hmm. our age. Like I think our biggest our biggest Spotify listener numbers are like, you know, I think it's like late twenties to like forty. Hmm. And so like it it they just grew shows. up. They grew up with us yeah. and stuck with us, and you know, that's why our fans have been dedicated. They mm-hmm. just they came. They came along. They latched on at the right moment, I guess, and we just got lucky that a lot of them did. I guess, yeah. It seems like if yeah, if you, if you had a fan that just stuck with you, it seemed they just stuck with you. I remember like. Right. Like I'm talking like the first records out, and because you know, like you get like the tour offer, you know, August Burns Red and on Earth, and and then someone I, I didn't know who you guys were, and then I, I think it was Ash that might have said it, or someone whoever, whoever was was booking it was like, no, they they hold her weight. Yeah. You, guys, you guys had that reputation since day one. Yeah. You know, it's just whoever uh, the fans that you know latched onto your music just were always there, since, yeah. and just kind of just grew and grew. Yeah, and, you know, it's crazy. Like doing, like we do, like a little meet and greet thing before each show, and some of the fans who come through and they're like, "Yeah, this is my twenty seventh August Burns Red show." Or yeah, there's oh. a there's a a dude who came up in our area and he lives in, in Dallas now and he saw us the other day in Dallas and he's like that was my 82nd ABR show yeah it's like yeah. holy crap dude like the amount, the amount of people that have seen this over 20 times is insane like yeah it's it's, we're, it's a big it's, they're it's really really dedicated awesome supportive fans yeah we couldn't be done without them for sure and I mean you guys are kind of and I was watching videos of of your production on his tour it looks incredible like, like the lights and you guys it's oh thank you it looks it looks sick man yeah we went for it we're we went we're for excited it. about yeah, yeah this tour's cool we're trying to make it uh we're trying to make it special because it's it's a you know it's a big celebration 20 years is a big deal yeah. to us, so we want to make it a special tour and it's, uh, it's our, a massive deal yeah our ld carlos he's like knocked it out of the park on this one he like designed like this whole awesome show and it's just yeah this is uh it's at, pretty ripping at the masquerade oh my goodness dude it's like our first tour that we've bought, like decking, like that we can like walk all over and stuff. And then there's like lights in between all the decks wow. and stuff. Yeah, that's a lot. That is a lot. That's a lot. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't. We our actually, backs to it the whole time. Yeah. I don't ever. I don't we really... actually had him turn down the brightness. Like it's running at like I think seventy five or eighty percent right now. Really? Like well, those, those strobe bars those behind bars, they bars pretty gnarly. Yeah, they can be so bright. Like we were in the pre production space. And we're just like, we got to turn this down or else like people are going to go blind in the front row. I like, do see people squinting sometimes yeah. like, whoa. Because like the, yeah, the ones that are like the big bars across the back that go across mat, like if they go white, that's when it's just like, wow. Look at this. Someone's got the entire show up. Yep. Bust their heart. And it's all timestamp too. Wow. That's sick. Good for them. 
front front and center view. I hope I played all right that night. Right. Probably not. It's Richard fine. Metal fan. What's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, probably not, man. <laughs> probably not. Dude, I mean, it looks like you guys spent a lot of time on this. Our, I this mean, is a lot. R L D did for RLD sure. So sick, hard. man. He spent a lot of time it took programming. Weeks. Yeah. I could see the weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We're 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 stoked on it, man. It's a fun show to put to to put on. I mean, and chorus and the and the lineup is perfect. Yeah, the yeah. it's a fun bill. Like if you like metalcore, this is a good this is a good show to go yeah. see. And we were just like yeah. really like proud as a band that other than touring with Parkway Drive and maybe some stuff on Warp Tour, we've never really done much together in, in the States. Yeah. And it just seemed kind of weird. We're like, all right, we should probably do this together. And so it was yeah. like a perfect thing. And then Beat From Within was just like, I want a metal band that does well that's never toured America before. And we're like, okay, it's them. We're like, because oh, I like hit up a buddy of mine. I'm like, who knows a lot about like up and coming bands? And I'm like, hey, what do you think? And he's just like, that band Beat From Within is crushing. And he's like, here's all their numbers. I know their stats, like, f- as far great. as their like Spotify reach, like inside America and all that stuff, because they're Scottish. Yeah. And they've been around for 17 years, and they've never toured America. And they're so 17 good. years? Are yeah. you serious? 17 yeah. years, and they're an awesome band. They they're play sick. so tight. They put on a great show, and, like, they're crushing. People People are into them. They're about to get – they have some big stuff lined up. They're about to, like, after, like, 17 years, they're about to get, like, real big. Yeah, I think they're, they're about to have a nice yeah. nice big glow up. Their band is their band is awesome. They're so good. They and, deserve it. And they are so sick live. Like, they just – all the best players. They're really good. And you guys got the first U.S. tour. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, look at them killing it in Europe, dude. Yeah. They're sick. And they have Pyro? What the fuck? That's sick. Yeah. I want Pyro. Me too, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've, like, called around to some venues, like, on, like, the bigger shows and stuff, been like, can we do Pyro in your venue? And they're like, no. It's just so hard to do anywhere indoors. Like, yeah. really well, in America, hard. In America. America. It's just so hard. Which like, is fine. Uh, even our own, like, Christmas festival that we do at home that's in mm-hmm. like a big enough space to do it it's still a pain like insurance yeah. is just like no you can't yeah Sorry. how do you get insurance for <laughs> I don't know we haven't we haven't successfully <laughs> we haven't done successfully it. Done it. <laughs> like in the room we want to play like they're just like no and it's just it's a lot of like hoops to jump through if you want to do it and like yeah. the pyro company that we used to do our live stream they're like we understand that we're like the last thing in the room like if you've got the money if the room even allows it, then we can come in and like do our jobs. Like they have like these massive tours that they know that they only do like this portion of the tour because the next portion they can't have any pyro and then they go out in the next portion. Like it's mm. and like like I said, they're a pyro company, so they only work with really, really big bands because that's who gets to take pyro. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, well you guys have your uh, Christmas show. Yeah. You know, and that and then that's been highly successful. It's been great. It's 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 a lot of work, but it's it's done really well. Especially now that we do it as like a festival thing, yeah, our great. our like eight hundred cap venue that was in town closed. The Chameleon Club, you remember yeah. the Chameleon Club of in course. Lancaster, Pennsylvania? Yeah, yeah it's 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 gone it's now. It's gone. So we have to do it. We do it at the convention center, which you know opens crazy. up the room for a lot more people, which is great. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, That's we almost cool. had to turn it into like a festival thing because otherwise, like, we wouldn't be able to just go in and like headline the convention center. <laughs> no, it, we're not drawing. That may be. it's yeah. a big it's a big space, but it's it's fun. It, it's yeah. it's a cool like uh, the Christmas show has become this like almost like a meetup for fans. Like yeah. like people who are from all over the country like get to meet up at the Christmas show and you know meet face to face with people that they've been interacting with online and stuff. It's kind of a yeah. It to, brings people together. Yeah, <laughs> the hardest part is yeah. building is building the bill because it's like, hey, oh, do you want to come to Pennsylvania? Two weeks before Christmas and play a concert, or like a week before <laughs> like, Christmas. And people are like, "No, we like, don't yeah, you want to come play a one-off show <laughs> oh, yeah. and right before the holidays." Like, right. it's, that's a big ask for for right. bands. Uh, you guys, you guys have the pool. Here's a uh, Brandon Sacrifice just fucking slain. Oh yeah, they crushed it this past year. Yeah, so this is at a convention center. Yeah, right. Beautiful. They do like they do concerts. Like that's where like if like Five Finger Death Punch comes and plays Lancaster, you play the convention center. Oh wow! But it's like right in town. It's like right in downtown. It's all. It's big. in the square of Lancaster City. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's a good location. From it's Era, right? Yeah, it's Era. Yeah. Ripping it from uh from high school to a. Uh, Convention Center. Right. It's great. You, you, guys, you, you guys did it. Oh, First funny. band, high school, Grammy, <laughs> Convention Center, Pyro. Right. <laughs> a 
pyro. We haven't we haven't achieved pyro. We only yet, did dude. it for the live stream. That was yeah, it. And that's only because no one else was allowed in the room. Yeah, we don't count that. We were able to do that because we could get at the actual certifications because there weren't human beings there other than us. Oh wow! Yeah. I, I for for you guys, I, I definitely see it happening. I would love to. We just got like I just know it's just really difficult. Like you have to like plan like certain venues in certain spaces, and it's just like oh, I bet, dude. Yeah. Do we, we, we gotta get pyro for the podcast. What's I'd like that. <laughs> yeah, just like a that would take this over the top. That would yeah. take this over the top. Yeah. You could put some candles around. There's one. Any more candles? Yeah, you have you have pyro. Oh right my oh, oh my goodness. Well, I know you guys could get back to a sound check. Um, yep. but uh, dude, I mean, we have a. It was an honor for for me to ha- to uh, have you guys here. I'm 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 very proud to see where how far you fucking took. Your your band, yeah. And thank made, you. And, and, yeah, Thanks, man. And, and you have a career. Holy we're, moly! We're it's good catching up with you, man. Yeah, yeah, we're grateful yeah, that was, we got to do this today. Yeah. This was fun. It was fun. So you're in the middle of a uh, what two month long tour? Yeah, well, we're doing like two legs, a month mm-hmm. on, a month off, and then a, another month on for the the 20 year anniversary thing. It wraps up in mid May. So nice. yeah, we were just like with like having the families and stuff. Now it's hard to do that long of a tour. So we just broke mm-hmm. it up. Like this is the first yeah. time we've really done that. We usually just go, you know, pound it out and do seven weeks at a time. Yeah, yeah but my, my th- that's I see a lot of dates. And it looks yeah, insane, right? There's but, a lot of shows. But what you don't see is a month off in the middle. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. There you go. great. <laughs> like after Charlotte, we come back, we go back out, and we start again in Philly a month later. Yeah. So that, we, yeah. we we didn't even get into it, but the the three singles you guys put out are are sick. Oh, oh thank thanks, you. man. Yeah, thank you. Re- Appreciate you listening to them. Reckoning has that really cool like 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 a bridge. Yeah, yeah, bridge. yeah. That, that, really, that interlude part. Really cool. So so the new record is called Death Below. Yep. yep. Death Below. March twenty fourth. Out March twenty fourth. Yeah. That's coming up. It's coming up. Holy right. moly! I know. And the lead up is just so long. You know, nowadays with records because of vinyl production, oh, just takes forever to put out a record now. It's a mess. Like, it is a mess. The record's been done since May. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's just yeah, we had like a nine-month lead after we finished it. Yeah, and, you're just ooh. sitting and waiting and waiting and waiting. But, but yeah, it, what are you guys doing? Oh, well, uh, I look at your, your dates, and there's uh, – you guys aren't doing anything on the 24th? We're doing a record release party oh, in cool. our hometown um, yeah. in like a, a small venue. It's We're not playing. We're just hanging. That's and sick. We're gonna do like I, a little Q and A, and yeah, it, it should be fun. Just right. like chilling with with people who are coming out, and um, we're gonna like raffle off some cool ABR memorabilia that we have sitting around. It should be special. So this yeah. is gonna come out. The do records come out on Friday, right? They come out on Friday. Yeah, yeah. they come out on Friday. Right? Come, it'll be a Friday, like, like a midnight thing. But oh. it's like yeah, twenty five, twenty six, twenty. So this will come out on on the twenty seventh. So so by the twenty seventh, you'll still have the whole week and a half of uh, shows. Hey Jay, can you pull up the uh, the uh, flyer? There you go. So you still have Omaha, uh, sh- Chicago, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. You guys going to Pittsburgh? That's yep. right. <laughs> Richmond, uh, Toronto. Oh, you guys going to Canada? Can you cl- close it out there? Yeah. Yeah. We, we added some shows at the end too. We have two in Toronto now and two in Montreal now. Dude, badass. Yeah. It'll be fun. We're yeah. looking, dude. The shows have been so fun. It's it's been a great tour. Yeah, and I'm stoked that we have a lot to look forward to still with it. Yeah, it's cool. that's right. All right, everyone, check out the new record and check out this uh, these dates. Yeah, and, uh, guys, Thank you. Thanks. honor man. Thank so, you for having us. Thanks for having us. All right, guys. Later. Later. Later.